Okay, in this video we're going to look at an example of finding the radius and interval of convergence for a power series. So our power series in this case is as follows. So we have the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of this rising product of odd numbers, so 1 times 3 times 5 up to 2n minus 1, over n factorial and then times x to the n. And then our first tool will be the ratio test. So in other words, we want to look at the limit of the n plus first term over the nth term, its absolute value. And if that's equal to L, then we know some information depending on what L is. So if L is less than 1, it absolutely converges. If L is bigger than 1, it diverges. And then if L equals 1, that gives us no information. So we'll first use the ratio test to figure out a general shape for the interval of convergence. And then uh, we'll have to use another test to test the endpoints because those occur at this point of no information. Okay, good. So let's get started. So... Our ratio test in this case goes as follows. So we need the n plus first term of this over the nth term of this. So the n plus first term would be as follows. 1 times 3 times 5, 2n minus 1. And then, because we want the n plus first term, we want the next odd number. So the x next odd number is 2n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial, and then we have x to the n. So now we're dividing all of that by the nth term, which is given. So that's 1 times 3 up to 2n minus 1, all over n factorial, and then this is going to be x to the n, and sorry, that should be x to the n plus 1. And then all of this is in absolute values. Now the absolute value doesn't matter for anything except for the x term. So now I'm going to rewrite this limit so that compatible terms are being divided by each other. So by compatible terms I mean maybe my rising powers, sorry, my rising products of odd numbers and my factorials. So the rising products of odd numbers will go as follows. So I have 1 times 3 uh, times 5 all the way up to 2n minus 1 and then 2n plus 1. So that will be divided by 1 times 3 times 5 all the way up to 2n minus 1. Good. So that will be this term and this term. And then next I have n factorial over n plus 1 factorial. Great. And then uh, finally I have x to the n plus 1 over x to the n. Now we can simplify this quite a bit. So notice this bit just cancels down to x. And then we can rewrite n plus 1 factorial as n plus 1 times n factorial, which is a general trick in uh, problems like this. And then finally, notice that this rising power to the 2n plus 1 odd number includes everything in the denominator, so we can cancel out a ton of stuff there too. Great. And then finally, we can cancel this n factorial out with this n factorial. And let's see what we're left with. So this is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of, now we can take the absolute value of x out, because that doesn't depend on n. And now, now we're left with 2n plus 1 over n plus 1, which equals 2 times the absolute value of x. Now we want that to be less than 1, so that means we have the absolute value of x needs to be less than 1 half, or x needs to be between negative half and positive half. But we don't know anything about what happens on the endpoints yet, but we can at this point say that the radius of convergence is 1 half. So I'll clean up the board and then we'll find out what happens at the endpoints. Okay, so far we've proved that this power series converges at least for x strictly between negative half and half. So now we want to check what it does on the endpoints uh, so that we'll be able to determine the interval of convergence. So let's look at the endpoint x equals one half. And in this spot, the series turns into the following. So notice x to the n becomes one half to the n, but we can just put a two to the n in the denominator. And now what we want to do is Notice that we can take this entire thing and write it as 1 times 3 times 5 all the way up to 2n minus 1. And now this is going to be over 1 over 2 over 3 
all the way up to over n. And now, so that's from the n factorial. And now we can take each of these uh, factors of 2, there are n of them, and put them all here. So uh, in other words, we can replace this with a 2, this with a 4, this with a 6, all the way up to 2n. So now, notice that this is another way of writing this series. So again, let's just go over this uh, one more time. So the numerators are all rising, odd, uh, rising uh, products of odd numbers. And now the denominators, we took this n factorial and these two um, to this 2 to the n factor and split the n factorial up and multiplied each part of it by 2 to give us this rising even um, product in the denominator. And now what we're going to do is replace each of these numbers, 3, 5, so on, with the even number before them. So let's see what we get when we do that. And notice that's going to give us um, something that is smaller. So that's going to be, so our series will be bigger than this series. So in other words, we're going to take 3, replace it with 2. We're going to take 5, replace it with 4, all the way up to 2n minus 1 is an odd number. We'll replace it with the previous even number, which is 2n minus 2. And now notice we have all of this is over 1 times 2 times 4, all the way up to 2n. But we can sneak the previous term in here, which is 2n minus 2. Great. But now we see that a bunch of these terms cancel. So this cancels with this. All of these cancel, leaving us with this is equal to 1 over 2n. And so that means our, every term in our series is bigger than or equal to the series 1 over 2n. In other words, half the harmonic series. Which means, so, by the comparison test, since every term in our series is bigger than or equal to every term in half the harmonic series, which diverges, um, it diverges at x equals one half. Okay, great. So I'll clean up the board and then we'll look at the case when x equals minus half. Okay, so in order to use the alternating series test, we need to show that this series is decreasing. And we'll do that by starting with the n plus first term and showing that that is, in fact, smaller than the nth term. So let's look at the n plus first term, really the absolute value because we're cutting out the alternating part. So the n plus first term is as follows, 1 times 3 times 5, all the way up to 2n minus 1 times 2n plus 1. So that's the n plus first term. All over... 2 to the n plus 1 times n plus 1 factorial. Great. Now what we want to do is separate out the nth term of this series and um, show that the extra bit that it takes to create the n plus first term is actually less than 1. So we'll do that as follows. So notice we want to compare this to, so the extra bit that creates n plus 1 is, notice that in this case we can write this as 2 times 2 to the n. In this case we can write this as n plus 1 times n factorial. And then all of this up here um, in the top creates the nth term. So let's see what we have. We have 1 times 3 all the way up to 2n minus 1 over 2 to the n uh, times n factorial. And then all of this is multiplied by uh, 2 in the denominator, n plus 1 in the denominator, and then 2n plus 1 in the numerator. So that's what we get from this is one of the extra terms, this is one of the extra terms, and then this is one of the extra terms. But now notice that here the numerator is smaller than the denominator, which makes this whole thing smaller than 1, which puts our inequality in the right direction. So in other words, the n plus first term is smaller than the nth term, so the absolute value of our sequence is decreasing. So the next thing we need to show is that the limit of these terms is 0, and then we'll have um, proved that this in fact does converge at x equals minus half.
function. And so now we need to show that the limit is equal to zero. And we'll do that as follows. So we'll look at the terms, but we're going to write the terms uh, in this way. So we'll take 1 times 3 times 5 all the way up to 2n minus 1. And then we'll take each factor of 2 and multiply it into the n factorial. And that'll give us 2 times 4 times 6 all the way up to 2n. Great. And we'll call this b sub n. Great. And now uh, the next thing to notice is that um, we can write this as the following product. So this is the product k equals 1 to n of 1 minus 1 over 2k. Great. And so no notice if we set k equal to 1, we get 1 over 1 minus half, which is um, 1 half. Then we get 1 over 1 minus 4th, which is 3 fourths, 1 over 1 minus 6th, which is 5 sixths, and so on and so forth. Great. And so now, instead of looking at this sequence bn, we're going to look at its natural log. So no notice that the natural log of bn equals, so that'll turn this product into a sum, so that'll be the sum from k equals 1 to n of the natural log of all of these terms, 1 over 1 minus 2k. And now we're going to use a property of this natural log and an inequality, which is not too hard to prove, but I won't prove it, I'll leave it to you. And that is that uh, each of these log terms is less than negative 1 over the sum from k equals 1 to n of 1 over um, 2k. So here what we used here is the fact that the natural log of 1 over 1 minus u is less than negative 1 over u. So that's the fact that we use there. So you can check that a number of different ways. Well, first of all, you could, che you could check that um, if you add the 1 over u to each side that this is true for some value of u, and then you get a decreasing function or something like that. But again, I'll let you check that. Um, and then at this point, we see that uh, if you take the limit here, you get uh, essentially the harmonic series, which means that as n goes to infinity in this case, you get negative infinity. Great, because we have this minus sign right here. But that's the natural log of these terms. So, but the natural log approaches negative infinity when the terms themselves approach zero. So, or we could like exponentiate both sides. If we exponentiate this side, we get bn. If we exponentiate the other side, we get e to the negative infinity, which is zero. In other words, we get the limit as n goes to infinity of these terms bn equals zero. Okay, great, which tells us that this series converges, and now we can summarize the whole thing, that we have the radius of convergence equals a half, which we calculated that before, and then the interval of convergence equals, so it'll be negative half to a half. We do not include a half, but we do include negative a half, and that's the end of this problem.